Over the nearly 20-year history of the Battlefield franchise, there have been many great maps worthy of praise. Some maps become legendary, icons themselves of the Battlefield series and worth remembering for their balance, uniqueness, and special gameplay. This is the story of the best maps in Battlefield. Battlefield 5 was seen by many core players as a significant downgrade in quality across the board. Its maps were no exception compared to those of Battlefield 1. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom. Unlike Battlefield 2042, at least these maps were playable, and a few were in fact pretty good. One of Battlefield 5's vanilla maps, Devastation, not only was an extremely well-designed map, gameplay-wise, but far and away the most immersive map through a World War II context. Devastation is a five-flag map in the tried-and-true diamond format with a major flag in the center. Set in the Battle of Rotterdam after its infamous bombing by the Germans, the city's terrain, structures, and environment can truly best be described by its given name. The destruction of the buildings completely litters the streets and alleys with rubble, blocking some passages and opening new and unexpected others. The building debris and additional pathing options create new options for flanking opportunities and vast quantities of additional cover without even including the constructible defenses using the game's fortification system. The destruction on the map adds an immense amount of character. Player footsteps are distinct against the fallen wood and brick, at least when the footstep audio works correctly. Other unique audio effects include the echoing and reverb particularly within the defining church element holding the center flag. Shooting bells within this structure also generates a pleasing ring which could notify players of nearby enemies or just provide a casual trinket to happily blast on your way to the next objective. Smoke plumes and small fires provide corners to hide and camp certain doorways. The map's lighting, in combination with the rubble, give it a dark, gloomy, and realistic atmosphere. However, this also had a detrimental habit of concealing enemies regardless if they were idly prone or camping a corner. It turns out that the blue tint added to the map and gray shading of the textures exacerbates the difficulties of seeing players friend and foe alike. Although differentiating object from player was more difficult prior to game updates, it still can be an annoying issue. On the other hand, some might argue that player camouflage should be effective on at least some maps. When we look at the flag layout of Devastation, one unique factor which significantly improves gameplay is both the close proximity of the five flags in conjunction with the sizable flag radius of each. Being an urban setting, each flag is positioned in and around building locations with plenty of cover, rooms, and hiding spaces. This means that attacking a flag solo is extremely difficult. Due to map size, some enemies are likely in the area. And when they enter flag radius to hold the capture, a large size can make the hide-and-seek game take time, allowing players from both teams to reinforce the fight. Ergo, Devastation becomes one of those maps which encourages squad play and following the team in order to maximize flag captures, even if it does lead to Zerg gameplay or NASCARing, the phenomenon of having a majority of players circle a map together. The bonus benefit to this is that teams periodically group up large numbers of players to fight over flags, making gameplay more engaging, intense, and prime targets for V1 rocket call-ins. Finally, not one flag on the map is a brutal one-way-in, one-way-out grind. Each flag provides multiple angles to attack from, giving players plenty of options when rotating to the nearest flags. Devastation's five flags begin with the A objective on the west, the train wreck. Sitting under the edge of a broken train bridge and nearby accident, it provides a moderate amount of cover in its immediate vicinity, especially with its downed train carriage in front. The area nearby under the remaining tracks, dry riverbed, and street to the church is limited, making getting to the point sometimes risky. The B flag on the north, the library, is a point of extreme contention throughout a round. 
Three accessible floors, all within the capture radius, give ample locations to hide or place spawn beacons. It is also one of the smallest flags by diameter, making it an excellent rocket target as you can pretty much eliminate all enemies on the flag. The D flag on the south, the cinema, can be frustrating. The theater itself is a large, fairly open room, though that won't stop players from hiding between the seating or under the fallen tapestry, which itself is one route up to the balcony floor. Entrances from the left and right provide easy access to the point, and a backstage hole through a building provides cover, and is also within the capture radius. The cinema lobby, which also grants access to the balcony floor, is frequently a camping location as many enemies filter through the two doorways looking to clear the point. In the east, the E flag of the old mall is the largest flag on the outside ring. It is also a multi-level point with the remains of a department store on the lowest floor. Accessible via a crater in the center of the flag, it is dark, cramped and full of mannequins a go-to hiding spot for players. The main floor is extremely barren having been completely bombed out. Only a few large pieces of concrete allow access to a limited upper level which has excellent line of sight over the point and to the southwest. The E flag is frequently built up using the game's fortification system, turning it into a mini fortress. Almost a requirement given its empty spaces. Finally, in the center of the main diamond is the sea flag, the church. It is the dominant structure on the map and one of the most memorable elements of Battlefield 5. Evoking strong parallels to Battlefield 1's center church on Tsaritsyn, Devastation's church is far larger, less of a grind, and unquestionably more balanced. Its sheer size, combined with the rubble in its center from the collapsed ceiling, makes the battle for the flag lengthy, enjoyable, and permits multiple styles of gameplay. Despite having multiple entrances, many of these are small portals which can create a mini-grind experience between teams pushing both ways. At the front of the church on its east side, the lobby inside provides access ways up to the pipe organ balcony granting players a defensive position with a clear view of a good chunk of the cathedral. The back and forth over the cathedral flag is a map constant. Its scale and atmosphere coupled with the interior gameplay makes it one of the best and most memorable structures of recent Battlefield games. As players traverse the ruined city, they may encounter one of the singular tanks provided to each team from their main bases, the only major vehicles on the map. These numbers can, of course, be supplemented by one each with the deployment of a call-in Churchill Crocodile or Sturm Tiger, though many players prefer to use their squad points for rockets here. This is partially on account of the supreme difficulty and danger of driving these heavy tanks through the rubble-filled streets. The quick changes in elevation, cover all over the place, open windows and alleyways make moving shots nearly impossible in most locations and turn them into sitting ducks for rockets and dynamite. That being said, certain positions can provide decent spots to camp a street, and proper handling of light tanks can be really effective. In short, tanking on this map is exactly as it should be. Limited, difficult, and yet a threat to those enemies not paying attention. Devastation has two primary issues though. The first remains its player visibility problem, which when combined with certain strong weapons and nasty hiding spots among the debris, can be frustrating. While this is an underlying issue with player model visibility and BF5 overall, reducing or eliminating the blue tint of the map may have reduced this annoyance. The second problem with far greater implications is the main base setups and positioning. While not an every game occurrence, it is not uncommon to find yourself on either side of a full flag capture base camp scenario. This is a result of the close proximity of the flags and the tendency of a stronger team to dominate the other. Whether a really strong team controls the round entirely, or one side of two evenly balanced teams is just unlucky, is irrelevant. 
This is Battlefield and these things are meant to happen. But what should be considered is what happens next. Main bases which can be camped with ease are a root cause of player dissatisfaction, especially when multiple vehicles are involved. In the case of Devastation, the problem is poor spawn locations and more importantly, a complete lack of cover from those spawns to the nearest flags. For a map littered with cover and buildings, it is safe to say that somebody dropped the ball in these spots. The German main is particularly nasty being located in the west behind the A flag. A dry riverbed and street lay between and players must cross this to break out. Even trying to sneak far north toward the B flag is extremely difficult. German players spawn on points just behind a few buildings, some of which can be easily sniped. The buildings along the map boundary are also within the playable area, meaning the British team can sneak up and hide in the doorways, lying in wait for players to run by. Moreover, the British tank has a clear line of sight over all of the clearing. On the other side, the UK main lies right across the street from the E flag in the east. This team has an easier time of breaking out, as they need only cross the nearby street and also have a covered approach toward the D flag. However, while an improvement over the German side, the UK tank is a sitting duck in its spawn, and more cover is needed in this section of the map. The E flag, in general, also has significantly more cover than the A flag, and because of this, one might consider the map slightly UK favored. Even with its constricted main base setup and scarce vehicle count, Devastation deserves every bit of praise the community heaps upon it thanks to its pathing options, flag positions, environment, atmosphere, and intense infantry gameplay. Its iconic cathedral not only provides an incredibly enjoyable map element, but it doesn't singularly dominate the flow of the map as it does on Zaritzen, as the city which surrounds it is well designed and more than capable of providing rewarding and exceptional player experiences. Devastation remains a beacon of what if. What if other Battlefield 5 maps had the same devotion to detail and textures that this map does? What if the game had committed itself to the same serious, dark, and gritty reality of World War II found here? It remains one of the few examples of Battlefield V to commit to the actual conflict and deliver proper levels of environmental immersion on top of a well-designed layout. While not perfect, it holds a spot as one of the best urban maps in recent Battlefield titles, and certainly one of the best maps, if not the best, of Battlefield V.